In this video, I want to go over a method of labeling that I've just called bucket labeling. Now, bucket labeling is very helpful when you have a singular event, like a face-off or a basketball shot, that has a lot of variables within that event. So, for example, you want to turn on a face-off, add the player, the strength, the location, <coughs> and the result, without being caught up to by lag time, um, and not having to use label mode afterwards. So how this works is I have a button up here. This button has some lead time, but it has no lag time. I then have a bunch of labels here in the middle that aren't connected to anything with any links or anything like that. But my two labels at the bottom do have links. These have two deactivation links. These deactivation links are turning off my original button. Now these labels also, however, have this apply before deactivations. So when they turn this button off at the top, they're going to apply the label before this button deactivates. That's different to the default of most labels, which are after activations. So what that means is that in a face-off, I can say, okay, a face-off is about to occur. I click face-off. I then have all the time I need without lag time, um, you know, chasing down my neck to select all the labels. So I can say, okay, this is player one. We're at even strength. This is in the neutral zone center. And then I can wait for the actual face off to occur and I can select win. That's gonna turn off this button, apply this win label. And now all that information is now in my instance. You see that both in the timeline and in the sorter. Another example of this and a little bit more complex of an example is a basketball shot. So here I have a basketball shot situation. And how this typically works when I code is I have an offensive and defensive position button. And these toggle on uh, my stats for an individual player. So offense gives me all my offensive stats. Defense gives me my defensive stats. For my defensive and offensive stats that are not shots, so turnovers, assists, rebounds, fouls, things like that, I want those events to have lag time. I want them to be consistent every single time. So those buttons are linked to a button that does have lag time. You'll see those buttons are linked there. However, for my shots, I do not want those to have lag time because I want to go through my bucket labeling method of selecting all of these different variables without having that lag time pressure. So I have the secondary button here that's named the same thing because buttons that are named the same thing will go to the same row in the timeline. But this one does not have lag time, and it's linked to just my shot labels at the very top there. So that means when I click Offense and I click Turnover, it's going to activate my button with lag time, and I'm going to have that event on my timeline. However, when I click, um, say, let's say, Made 3, it's going to activate this button instead. And it's got no lag time there now. So I can select all of my labels without that pressure. I can say catch and shoot three. I can say it was contested. And then I've got my shot location labels here that have those deactivation links from these shot labels to turn this button off. These also have that before deactivation toggle selected instead of the standard and default after activations. So that means when I select one of my shot locations, let's say the left corner, it's going to turn this button off, add that label before this button deactivated, and now all that information is in this instance in the timeline. What's better as well is because this offensive instance was on that entire time, all that label information, because it's not connected to anything with any exclusive links, is also in that position button. So now I have left with a situation where I have both my position button and my individual instance have all of that shot information, the shot location, the shot player, the shot quality, the shot, action, uh, the shot result, both here and here, and the shot type. So again, going through that process, I select offense, I select a shot type, let's say, uh, sorry, a shot result, let's say May 2. It turns on my button without lag time. I have all of my time to select my labels. And then this last label in my, um, in my loop here is going to turn off my instance while adding the label to that instance as well as adding that label to my offensive position.